afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. This is none other than Sugi Shogun here, returning after a month or so of hiatus. But now, during the summer, I will be catching up with a lot of anime from this year, last year, and also some older anime, which I really want to talk about and review on the channel. But today, we're going to be focusing on Black Clover, which surprisingly actually went on a hiatus two months ago after its 170th episode on March 30th. Now, before we review the first 170 episodes, I want to talk about this peculiar hiatus. Now, you see, I've been following anime for a very long time, and when you have these long-running popular shonen like Detective Conan, Naruto, now Boruto, or One Piece, or Dragon Ball, they never go on a break during the year. Yes, there's like holidays, like the Golden Week or something, so basically two times a year they are not airing, but 50 episodes per year, non-stop for a lot of these long-running uh, anime, and when they come up too close with the manga, then they start, you know, producing more filler arcs and etc. So that is very interesting what happened with Black Clover, because usually what happens on this situation where the anime is closing up to the manga, they basically stop it. And that what happened with Hitman Reborn, with uh, D. Grayman and Inuasha, they stopped it. And then years after they adapted the uh, latter arcs, and the obviously one solution also is to basically create an original anime ending. That's what they did with Full Metal Alchemist. That's what they did with uh, Tokyo Ghoul and a lot of others. And the surprising thing about this is they didn't went with an original anime ending here. So they decided to, hey, we're going to be pausing this anime and then coming back whilst allowing the manga to go on so we can add up more stuff. And this is by Studio Pierrot, which is the first point we should talk about. And Studio Pierrot is notoriously known from anime original endings. So it would have been definitely on Pierrot's uh, repertoire to basically do an original anime ending for Black Clover. And who knows, they might be adapting the uh, last arc and after that they might end it or create an original ending. I don't know how long uh, Black Clover is gonna be going for. I kind of surprisingly that this arc is gonna be the last or the second last arc. They could expand on the world and build a lot of things obviously but that's my assumption and people who have read the manga can leave their theories without leaving major spoilers down below. Now after we have gone, gone through that important thing I wanted to talk about, which is, by the way, a good thing, because Black Clover is 100% coming back. When it is coming back is another thing, and we will we'll be seeing fillers. So fillers are probably the good thing to also start about before we go into the premise. So a lot of other long-running animation and have an immense amount of fillers, and actually on, you know, Black Clover, you have around 10 fillers plus a six-episode filler arc, or basically eight-episode filler arc. And I didn't watch that filler arc, so that will not be included on this review. And um, so in case you're looking for a review of that filler arc, you can go elsewhere. But I'm not going to be reviewing fillers because I didn't watch most of them. And this review will be based on the fillerless version. And I think that's a fair way to review shows because filler is not original stuff. It's not supposed to be as good as the main material. But sometimes we had situations where fillers have been good. Boku no Hero Academia being one example where there's been a couple of good filler episodes. But where basically, um, where should we start is that what is the premise of this anime? So basically it revolves around Asta and Yuno, which are basically the main characters, or we could argue that Asta is the main character here, and Yuno is a secondary protagonist of sorts, but most of the show is definitely focusing on Asta more, and they were basically abandoned at a church on the same day, raised together as children, and they kind of wanted to have this dream to become the Wizard King. And now, this is where a lot of the plagiarism or accusations revolve around Black Clover, because a lot of people are accusing that the Wizard King dream and the characters are basically copied from Naruto, the Wizard King kind of being the equivalent of Hokage. And obviously it is true, the creator of Naruto actually helped to create the premise for Black Clover, so it's very normal that there's a lot of similarities between the premise story 
around uh, Black Clover and some of the like the base desires of the characters, especially the main character here, Asta. But however, if you would compare like you know to Sasuke, I would say these are kind of different types of characters. Because Yuno is also a good guy and he doesn't really like fall into the dark side or anything. And also they get like very equally amount of screen time where Sasuke gets significantly less screen time compared to Naruto. Uh, especially on Shippuden. So there are some fundamental differences between these two shows which get to compare a lot. Also I would say Naruto as a story is a story about acceptance. While a lot of the story revolving around Black Clover, funnily enough, when you go into a lot of the root decisions of some certain characters, actually revolves around revenge. And a lot of people may not agree with that assessment, but basically a lot of the storylines are actually based on revenge of sorts. So there are a lot of similarities between the two, and that's fine. There's always going to be influences from other anime to another, but I think it stands well on its own. And it's the way the arcs are deciphered, the way the world is built up, and the way the battles go and a lot of other things are quite different from Naruto. One of the things, obviously, is the side character development. So... Black Clover focuses on guilds, and these guilds are basically, you know, uh, basically uh, guilds where there's magic knights who do different types of quests around uh, the kingdom, like save people, save peasants, and, you know, deal with uh, foreign forces, and, you know, all these types of stuff. And basically they have, like, their rankings there, and they compete against each other in the kingdom for points. And then there's this sort of like a class discrepancy, like the nobles versus the peasants, which is something that you see quite a lot measured in the actual anime. And this is something that doesn't actually exist at all in Naruto, for instance. So, and, and this comes into also the fact that because it rolls around guilds, all of these guilds have actually quite a lot of different characters. And in Naruto, for example, in Shippuden, um, all the character development was focusing on pretty much 90% on Naruto and 10% on Sasuke. And all the other characters got really shafted and they didn't receive any power-ups or significant progression during the second half of that anime. While in Black Clover, um, the guilds together and their team members are getting stronger together. Side characters have a lot more limelight during this series, which is nice because when side characters are fighting on a tournament arc or uh, another against another side character, you don't really know the outcome of those battles usually. Because um, when you watch the main character fight, you have a, usually a pretty good idea. Are they going to lose or are they going to be winning? So what I always like about uh, series that have a lot of side characters which get a lot of limelight, you're basically going into that uncharted territory where you don't necessarily know the outcome of what's going to be happening and who's going to be dying and what type of power-up this person's going to be getting. So there's a lot of um, good character development, even though it might be a bit shallow for certain side characters in this anime. And I think it's a lot more, you know, focusing on wide variety of characters than the main character alone. And I think that's a great balance what Black Clover brings versus a lot of other um, types of shonen anime and yes it's kind of akin to a fairy tale in that sense but I think um, people actually fucking trained on this series instead of like getting random power-ups but I mean so Black Clover I mean we're already eight minutes in and we haven't really touched upon too many things here so when we go into the actual animation Surya Pierrot has done great animation but because it's sort of a this sort of episodical thing there are a lot of shots that are really bad like the, some of the special effects that they use on the anime are not well done. The actual art on the manga is pretty damn solid at times, but a lot of these special effects and magic, they look kind of poor. They look something that were kind of made on 90s, and don't get me wrong, 90s had some very clean-cut uh, special effects as well in anime, but there's definitely elements here which could be looking better. In the future, where Black Clover might turn into a 24-episode season instead of like being pushed on a weekly basis we could see a quality upgrade possibly and also the openings do have pretty nice animations that's something that really strike me out a lot is the openings and endings in black clover which are very good but the main ost is not as strong as the ops and endings something that i wouldn't listen outside of the anime and usually when we have a shonen jump series they have a pretty high quality osts but in the case of 
you know, Black Clover, this is not the case. And so the OST is not definitely the strongest or the one it really deserves compared to its counterparts, which are being smaller or even bigger than Black Clover. Um, and we already touched upon that there's actually very few fillers in the anime, which also is a positive side. It doesn't feel like the episodes are dragged out or the arcs are dragged out. I think there's good amount of action in this. The characters start end up growing on you, even though they seem one-dimensional at times. And they're, and this is applies to a lot of shonen, obviously, but um, you just kind of grow on them, even though you don't think the world building or other plot parts of the plot are as amazing as some of the other shonen anime I would put into. But I think the um, the Black Clover is, it does have a decent world. Like, it was something like I would definitely think it better as Fairy Tale. And there's a bit of mythology there, not too much. And uh, there's a bit of history built up on the characters as well, which is something I always appreciate because you have to also build that up in order to have a good show. But, I mean, it could go on for a very long time depending on how they're going to be expanding the world. But I think it's going to be soon ending. That's also going to be very interesting, you know, a dynamic to think about because we also know that My Hero Academia is ending. So you basically have all of these very big shows which been long running are coming to an end. And there's nobody else basically taking up that torch for running a long running shonen. And that's partially fault of Weekly Shonen Jump, but we're going to be doing a video about that uh, um, exclusively. Now, in terms of the voice acting, I think it's good. We have a new person, obviously, um, voicing Asta. A lot of people hate it. I kind of grow into it. I had no problem. And they pretty much uh, reduced the um, autistic screeching too much on, on it. By the way, on the OVA, they had a different voice actor on Asta than they did on the actual anime. And, um, you know, I think voice design, uh, you know, everything about that is good. The animation is decent when it wants to be decent. But as I said, the special effects are probably one of the things that's bringing down the anime quite a lot. And it's like the designs of the characters are looking good. And the movements are not bad exactly, but some of them, uh, the flight sequences where rocks are flowing or, you know, there's like some things breaking down on the ground. These look very sketch-like, some very, very... Um, not super detailed, which is something I, you know, think could have been done better. But then again, I'm a realist. This is a 170 episode series where you got to produce a new episode per week. You only have so much time to do these things. But, I mean, I don't really have much else to add on Black Clover. I think the last arc of this uh, specific 170 episode set is actually the best. I think the story does get a bit better after the whole uh, when who is the real bad guy behind everything kind of gets uh, explored or so. So I, I think, you know, it's it's really standing well with a lot of other shows. And, and I think it, once it gets more down the line of the story, it starts to, you know, you know, differentiate itself from Naruto being exactly the same. And I think... The characters also are, you know, different type of focus dynamic and feel to Naruto. And obviously, this takes place on a feudal uh, world, which is based on like a European fantasy. And also, it's like, it's not even similar to um, Seven Deadly Sins. It's totally different feel, atmosphere, and lore uh, versus that one, which... And, and these are two different shows, even though they have both like magic knights basically doing spells and stuff. But, but these, that's more like, uh, yeah, I think the Serendilis is a lot more feudal. It has like a more like a knight type of thing. And this one's more about mages and wizards. But that's pretty much my rundown. I'm not going to be blabber any longer. Thanks for watching. I will be seeing you guys on the next review whenever that happens. See you soon.